Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants? I'm back, guys. Click that like button. Subscribe to my channel. What's up, y'all? Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Got another great video for you guys today. As usual, you guys know the deal on this channel, man. We must continue to set the record straight, stop the lies, stop the narratives, stop them from rewriting the history, y'all. Right, as it pertains to Michael Jordan, the 80s and the 90s, man, we must continue to put some respect on these guys. And in this video, we're going to talk about that. Michael Jordan and how we've heard people say in the past that LeBron James has had to do more than Michael Jordan had to do, right? They'll try to make it seem like, oh, LeBron James had, a, had more responsibilities than Michael Jordan on the basketball court. He had to do more. All Michael Jordan had to do was score. This is what they'll say. These idiots like Channing Fry and the Draymond Greens, the, the J.J. Reddicks, these idiots, the Jason Williams, these people who think they know about the history of the game, who think they know about the 80s and the 90s because they played in the NBA. Well, I've told you guys what. Just because you played in the league does not mean that you understand or know or respect the history of the NBA or you're being honest. These are people are very disingenuous, guys. And in this video, that's what we're going to talk about, man, because Michael Jordan had way more responsibilities than LeBron James ever had. And we're going to talk about this video. And I want to thank you guys, man, everyone across the world, everyone across the states has been supporting my channel, guys. Once again, we must continue to stand up to this stuff, guys. And I really appreciate you guys rolling with me. It really is humbling. Like I said, man, shout out to everyone out there worldwide, everyone across the states, the true basketball fans, man. Thank you to all you guys, for real. And you guys know what to do. Turn the volume all the way up. Hit that play button. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes. And let's roll. So, yes, guys, like I said, man, there's been many, many times I've heard some of these fake quote-unquote analysts try to break down Michael Jordan's career and try to give historical perspective on Michael Jordan as it relates to LeBron James. I told you guys like Channing Fry and the Draymond Greens, the Gilbert Arenases, the J.J. Reddick, the Jason Williams. These people, they think that they're, or they feel that they're giving you the facts, right? But... Once again, they get exposed because people like me who grew up watching this stuff, who are trying to give you guys the facts, the education, who's being honest with you guys, there's no narratives or agendas here. These guys, it don't add up. What they say doesn't add up. So when you hear these fools say, oh, LeBron James had more responsibility than Michael Jordan. LeBron James had to do more than Michael Jordan. They can never tell you what. They can never tell you what. What will they say? Only all Michael Jordan had to do was score. This is immediately when you know they're a bunch of morons and a bunch of idiots, and they never grew up watching the 80s and the 90s ever basketball, guys. I told you, I do not care about their age. I don't care if they were alive during this time. They did not watch it. They did not. For anyone to say with a straight face, and they're trying to be honest, they're trying to educate, and they're going to sit there and say that all Michael Jordan had to do was score is insane. Insane. Once again, these fools, they don't think about the entirety of the game. They focus on what? Offense, scoring, the numbers, the stats. They don't know or think about the other things, the intangibles that I'm always telling you guys about on this channel that LeBron James and a lot of the current players lack. They lack these things. And these fake analysts, they don't respect these aspects of the game. They don't understand these aspects, right? So what am I talking about? The intangibles. Well, let's think about Michael Jordan and when they say all you had to do is score. No, Michael Jordan also had to be a big brother to his teammates like a Scottie Pippen, like a Horace Grant, like a B.J. Armstrong, right? He had to be a big brother to these guys, right? He was. So what does that mean? That's Michael Jordan, what? Leading these guys by example. What are we always talking about on this channel, guys? Michael Jordan making his teammates better, right? That's the big brother mentality that Michael Jordan had, the role that he took on. I've told you guys what, Michael Jordan had to be the big brother for these guys, had to lead them. He had to be the enforcer for the Chicago Bulls. He was the enforcer. Has LeBron James ever been the enforcer? No, he ain't never been no enforcer. LeBron James is a flopper. You cannot be an enforcer and a flopper. This LeBron James, he saw, he load manages. Ain't no damn enforcer. Michael Jordan was the enforcer. And it's not the enforcer in the traditional sense that, you know, a Charles Oakley or a Robert Parrish or a Rick Mahorn, a Bill Lane Beer, you know, uh, some of these other guys as far as being enforcers on the court, hard fouls, you know, things like that. Michael Jordan enforced the way the Bulls were going to practice, right? So think about that. He's enforcing the standard. That's an enforcer. He's enforcing the standard as what, of which the Bulls are going to play with. The standard he's up, upholding. That's the enforcement I'm talking about, guys. 
He enforced the way that they were going to play the game out there on the court. That's Michael Jordan. The way that they're approaching the game, he's enforcing these things, right? That's called leadership. That's the big brother mentality of Michael Jordan. LeBron James has never had these responsibilities. He's never needed to do these things. This is what we're always talking about with LeBron James. He's never, you know, uh, you know, molded guys up through practice, right? He's never lead these guys in practice. He's never worked with players, developed guys. None of this stuff. Has LeBron James ever developed a player like Michael Jordan helped develop a Scottie Pippen? Not even close. And LeBron James has had many opportunities over his career, right, to do these things. He could have worked with guys like Larry Hughes. He could have worked with guys like uh, Zuldrun Silgowskis. He could have worked with guys like Drew Gooden and Anderson, Anderson Varejao. Right? He could have worked with a lot of these guys, the Booby Gibsons of the world. You're telling me that a Booby Gibson isn't the same as a B.J. Armstrong, perhaps? And Michael Jordan was a big brother, right? He helped develop a B.J. Armstrong, give B.J. Armstrong the, the, the confidence, right? So why didn't LeBron James do any of these things? LeBron James could have taken an Andrew Wiggins and developed an Andrew Wiggins. He could have developed a rapport with a Kyrie Irving or a Kevin Love. He never did these things, though. All he does is force these guys to play in his system, to fit around him, right? So it puts these guys in a very awkward position, right? It forces everyone to point the finger at them all the time. Oh, they're not helping LeBron James. This is what it means to be LeBron James' teammate. That's never been the, the case for Michael Jordan. So that leads me to another aspect of things that LeBron James has never had to do or deal with that Michael Jordan did, and that's accountability. LeBron James has never had to take the accountability, the responsibility for his career. Think about it. This man's taking no responsibility from the media, from his fans. His fans give him no flack, nothing. They hold him accountable for nothing, responsible for nothing. Because they don't know about accountability. Most of LeBron James fans are children or children in the mind. They might be older than me. They might be around the same age as me. But mentally, they're children. They're children, child mentally. This is why they don't respect things like honor, integrity, class, sportsmanship. They don't respect these things. They never call out LeBron James. But when we talk about Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan was always held accountable for the Bulls' failures, for their struggles, whatever the case may be. It was Michael Jordan who always took the blame and deflected all the credit onto his teammates. LeBron James is the complete opposite. He takes all the credit, never takes the blame. But they want you to believe that all Michael Jordan had to do was score? No, Michael Jordan had to be a big brother. He had to be the enforcer. He had to take all the accountability. He was a real leader. He had to be a leader. LeBron James has never been a leader. He's never been a true leader in the sense of the word and what it means to be a leader. These guys just want to be leaders in names. They want to get paid the most money. They want to get the most attention and be viewed as the leader, but they don't want the responsibilities of the leader. They don't want the accountability of being a leader. This is what Scottie Pippen learned when Michael Jordan retired in 1993 after the 93 season. What does Scottie Pippen mention? That he was not aware of all the things that Michael Jordan was shielding them from. The reporters, all the questions, all the pressure, all this stuff. They knew nothing about this because Michael Jordan never put the pressure on them. He took the pressure off of them and gave them all the credit. Gave them all the credit and deflected all the blame off of them onto himself. It's the complete opposite for LeBron James. LeBron James will be losing in an NBA Finals three games to one and he'll say what? Oh, I'm averaging triple-double, so, uh, you know... Or he'll be losing in an NBA Finals and he'll say what? Well, I'm the greatest player in the world. So these are the things that you hear from LeBron James. The team will lose a game. He reads off his stat line, right? He immediately deflects anything off of him. He wears a cast to a post-game press conference. It's always an excuse for LeBron James. We think about just last season. What did you hear a lot of these is like Kendrick Perkins talking about? No, oh, LeBron James has been fighting through a foot injury all season. Once again, more excuses for LeBron James. Never has to take accountability for his failures at the ends of these games. His inability to be a closer. What do they say for LeBron James? Oh, he makes the right plays at the end of games. He makes the right plays at the end of games. This is how they excuse LeBron James, right? His failures and his fumbles and bumbles at the end of games. Meanwhile, Michael Jordan was known as being one of the greatest closers, if not the greatest closer in the history of the game, guys. It's not even a question here. Michael Jordan, that was his M.O., right? To close you out, to do something when it mattered most, right? To be there, to perform, to raise his level of play. LeBron James has not done that. He's shrunk under the moments. He's been inconsistent in these moments, which is why he needs a Ray Allen or a Kyrie Irving to close these games out, a Dwayne Wade, whatever the case may be, an Anthony Davis. So when you hear people say, oh, Michael Jordan had to do a score, LeBron James has more responsibilities on the court. No, he does not. 
He has no responsibilities on the court. LeBron James plays in the system, his list system. There's no responsibilities for LeBron James. Anything that LeBron James does on the court or doesn't do is on him. It's on him. So when they try to make it seem like, oh, LeBron James has to run the offense. He has to rebound the ball. He has to do. No, he doesn't. This is what he's choosing to do because he wants to hog the spotlight. And it's all about the stats. It's not about winning. All this stuff that LeBron James did over all these years, the list system, he still doesn't understand. No one cares about those stats. No one cares. There have been all-time great players with all-time great stats. Will Chamberlain had all kinds of crazy stats. We, we only want to hear about the winning. We want to hear about the winning. The stats are one part of the game. It can't be the be all the end-all, be-all. And for LeBron James to be compared to a Michael Jordan, people try to really say that all Michael Jordan do is score. Once again, they do not know the history of the Chicago Bulls or Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was the utility man for the Bulls, guys. Utility man. What does that mean? That means that anything the Bulls needed Michael Jordan to do, he could do. So there were instances where they needed Michael Jordan to rebound. Maybe Horace Grant was out. Maybe Dennis Rodman was out. Maybe they had some injuries. Michael Jordan could pick up the slack on the rebounding. Right? He's one of the greatest rebounding guards in the history of the game, guys. Those are the facts, man. All right, Michael Jordan gave the effort on the rebounding. But we all know about Michael Jordan's playmaking ability, right? To me, he's the greatest playmaker in the history of the game, guys. Playmaking. I'm not saying he's the greatest passer or assist man. Playmaking, guys, is not just passing the ball, all right? Playmaking encompasses other aspects, moving without the basketball, creating plays without the basketball, with the basketball in your hands. Michael Jordan has a post-up game. He can make plays out of the post. Michael Jordan could also make plays on the defensive end, right? He's a defensive, uh, defensive, uh, all-time great defensive player. So he can make plays on the defensive end. That's called playmaking, where a lot of players might be a one-dimensional playmaking. Maybe they are passing, but they don't have the post-up game of Michael Jordan. Maybe they can't move out the basketball like a Michael Jordan and create plays that way. They don't have the defense of a Michael Jordan to create plays that way. So for me, Michael Jordan's the greatest playmaker because Michael Jordan can make plays on the offensive end with or without the ball in all kinds of areas of the court. But also, Michael Jordan's defense helps him playmake. He can make uh, defensive plays, right, turning defense into offense. We've seen Michael Jordan many times steal the ball, get out in transition, block a shot, get out in transition, grab the rebound, get out in transition. This is Michael Jordan, guys. These are the facts here. So when we think about those things, Michael Jordan had to carry the Bulls offensively, absolutely. But they want to downplay to say, like, all he had to do was score. No, Michael Jordan had to score historically, historically, for the team to be competitive and win. Think about it. This is not Michael Jordan averaging 25 points a game for his career or 24 points a game for his career. The man has the highest average in the history of the NBA. The history of the NBA. So when they try to do diminish it by saying all he had to do was score, it's invalid. Once again, you're diminishing Michael Jordan's greatness. No, Michael Jordan had to score historically for the Bulls to be competitive and to win. We think about the 1993 NBA Finals. The, I was talking about this, guys. The Bulls and the Suns scored 640 points each. Each. They both scored the same amount of points, guys. The difference was Michael Jordan's 41 points a game. 41 points a game. Where the next highest teammate was Scottie Pippen at 20 points a game. He doubled up, doubled up. The next highest teammate doubled him, guys. This would happen in the, 90, 90, or the 1993 NBA Finals, guys. Right, historically, it was oh, Michael Jordan had to score. No, he had to be historic in that finals. No one's done it since, guys. No one. So these guys, is they get, you get exposed when you hit the Channing Fries and some of these other players, the Jason Williams, the Gilbert Arenas, the JJ Reddicks. They want to diminish Michael Jordan's overall game by saying all he had to do was score, which that's not valid. Michael Jordan had to be the leader. He had to be the big brother. He had to be the enforcer. He had to hold these guys accountable. He had to take all the blame, all the accountability. This is what Michael Jordan was doing. He had to carry them offensively, be the guy that everyone else fed off in the triangle offense. So Michael Jordan sacrificed right his stats for winning by going in the triangle. But when we think about the triangle offense, without Michael Jordan in the triangle, the Bulls are not winning without Michael Jordan there. They can't run the triangle through Scottie Pippen. It would never work. Everyone fed off of Michael Jordan, guys. Watch the games. What do you see? Guys like Luke Longley, Will Perdue, Bill Wennington, Stacey King, Scott Williams, the Horace Grants, right? The Dennis Rodmans, the Tony Kukoshes, the Scott Burrells, 
the Judd Busters, the Bob Hansons, the Craig Hodges, the John Paxons, the BJ Armstrongs, the Ron Harpers, all of these guys fed off of Michael Jordan. They fed off of Michael Jordan on the offensive end. And on the defensive end, right, people act like Michael Jordan doesn't have to play defense. Right, one of the great defensive players of all time. Without Michael Jordan on the Bulls, playing defense, the Bulls don't win, man. They don't win. People make it seem like all he had to do was just shoot the ball a lot, and that was it. Just shoot the ball and then rest on defense. No, Michael Jordan had to play the defense. He had to be a playmaker. He had to be a leader. All of those things. And show for 82 damn games. Lead by example. Right? Show the sportsmanship. Show a love of the game. Show for the fans. LeBron James ain't doing none of that stuff as it compares to Michael Jordan, guys. LeBron James don't take the accountability like Michael Jordan. No way. He don't play for the love of the game like Michael Jordan did. LeBron James wants a no trade clause. Michael Jordan had a love of the game clause in his contract. You see the difference between them, guys? You see the difference. LeBron James couldn't carry his teams offensively. This is why he always need another player. A Dwayne Wade, a Chris Bosh, a Kyrie Irving, a Kevin Love, a Ray Allen, an Anthony Davis. He needs these other guys, the Rajon Rondos. Right, think about it. He needs other guys to play make for him to help him offensively. Michael Jordan was the entire offense for the Bulls. Everyone fed over him offensively. And on the defensive end, LeBron James has been a liability for years on the defensive end. So he's always needed his teammates to cover for his failures and deficiencies on the defensive end. But they want to point to a couple of years when he was on his stacked super heat, uh, super team in Miami. Oh, LeBron James was one of the great defensive players in Miami. In Miami. Michael Jordan was a great defensive player his entire career. LeBron James hasn't been good on defense in 10 seasons, guys. 10 seasons hasn't even been good on defense. He was never great on defense, but he hasn't even been good on defense in 10 seasons. That's not the case with Michael Jordan. So, obviously, it's LeBron James who has less responsibilities than Michael Jordan. LeBron James wants you to believe. LeBron James is like that person at work that wants, that wants to seem like they're busy all the time. Like, you know that person. They always look like they have something in their hand. They're always going somewhere. They always look busy so that no one bothers them. So, everyone looks like, oh, man, wow, you know, Jim is really busy again. He's always busy. But meanwhile, they ain't do the damn thing. They're only busy because they want you to believe that they're busy. It's the same thing for LeBron James in his offense, his little system. They want you to believe that LeBron James has all these responsibilities. Oh, he's got to do all this stuff. He has to dribble the ball up. He has to play make. He has to rebound. No, this is what LeBron James wants you to believe. He wants you to believe he's doing all these things because there's no other way for LeBron James to play. He can never adjust his game or adapt his game or allow anyone else, right, to take the lead. It won't happen. So they make you believe that LeBron James has more responsibilities. It's not even close, guys. Does he have any defensive responsibilities, LeBron James? No. Who's giving more effort on the defensive end? Michael Jordan or LeBron James? Who's giving more effort on the rebounding? LeBron James or Michael Jordan? I mean, think about it, guys. LeBron James just passed Michael Jordan this season for offensive rebounds? Offensive rebounds. It took him, what, like 10 seasons extra 400 more games to pass Michael Jordan, a six foot six guard, in offensive rebounds. LeBron James has still not passed Michael Jordan in personal fouls. Even though he's played over 400 more games than Michael Jordan, still hasn't passed him in personal fouls yet? What are we talking about here, man? What are these idiots talking about? I'm telling you guys, stop listening to these fake analysts, these fools. Just because they play in the NBA does not mean they under understand the history of the game. And it does not mean they're going to give you the facts, guys. They're going to be honest with you. They're not. They're only there for the money. They're there for the views. They ain't got no integrity. LeBron James has never had the responsibilities of a Michael Jordan. Never has. They've never given him a responsibility. He's never taken any onus or accountability for anything in his career. Think about it. They excuse all the finals losses. And then they tell us that Michael Jordan's only undefeated because he played nobody. They excuse all LeBron James' failures, the turnovers. Oh, LeBron James played a long time. That's why it was those turnovers. So can we say the same thing about the scoring? It pretty much goes hand in hand. They'll tell us that Michael Jordan shot the ball. Oh, well, Michael Jordan scored those points. He has all those scoring tiles because he shot the ball the most. So can we say the same thing for LeBron James' scoring record? Right? The all-time scoring lead, he has the most shots. So he's taking the most shots in the history of the game to score the most points. Hmm. Doesn't that sound like Michael Jordan leading the league in scoring every single season? But they'll, they'll make a problem with that with Michael Jordan. He's a shot chucker. But LeBron James ain't a shot chucker. He's a pass-first player. They want you to believe. See? Oh, LeBron James has more responsibilities. 
LeBron James is a poor rebounder, poor rebounder. He's got, what, 11,000 rebounds? The man should be well over 15,000 rebounds by now, but he's a poor rebounder, which is why he's not. But they want you to believe he has all responsibilities. It's a joke, guys. It's laughable. LeBron James has never had the responsibility that Michael Jordan has had. He's never had the pressure that Michael Jordan has had. He has not, guys. I don't want to hear about LeBron James' pressure. The man driving around in Hummers in high school. He's under pressure? He's under pressure? Chosen one tattoo on his back, but he's under pressure. Really? Not buying it, guys. Not buying it. They didn't even pick up Michael Jordan at the airport. They didn't even pick him up at the airport. Okay, guys? So stop the nonsense, man. You guys know the deal, man. Michael Jordan is a utility man for the Chicago Bulls. He did everything the Bulls needed him to do, whenever they needed him to be, or whatever they needed him to do. Michael Jordan could do it. That hasn't been the case for LeBron James. He's needed other players to cover for his deficiencies and the things that he's not good at, the rebounding, the defense, all these things. Where's the leadership? Where's the sportsmanship? How many coaches are fired? But LeBron James has more responsibilities than Michael Jordan? Stop the nonsense, guys. You guys know the deal, man. I'll catch you guys on the next one.